Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, 2023, officially, for uh, everybody. Of course, I, I declared myself on the new year some, uh, some time ago, and I think uh, I'm pretty well into it and ready to make it work for me. But now, of course, the rest of the world has joined me, and uh, now everybody's on 2023. And uh, this is January the 2nd. And uh, in the United States, it's still a legal holiday for many people, so uh, I guess some of you still have the opportunity not to do Monday at work. You may have another day off. But those of us in the communication business, uh, we never be, we never get a vacation. <laughs> we have to take it. And so uh, I've kind of taken a vacation, and uh, I was grateful for that opportunity, but now uh, I have to get back to work and try to make some value, create some useful work, and uh, do something that will help you uh, have a better life. Some people say, make more money, have more fun, have a better situation. Well, I want to do that too, but I also want to help you in some other very important ways. And one of the ways we want to do that is share some interesting ideas. A, uh, it was a surprise, but not really, because uh, some uh, weeks ago I was wondering, whatever happened to Barbara Walters? And so I did a little research and found out that uh, she really has publicly disappeared and that uh, her mental state and condition had deteriorated to the point where um, that's about all there was left of her was, you know, the body of Barbara Walters. Then, of course, on the last day of the year, we heard that she had passed away. And uh, I was kind of expecting that, but... Um, <laughs> Obviously, it was a surprise to many people. But the reason I was trying to check her out again is because I had used her a great deal in some of my teaching, and particularly one particular aspect of her teaching that I'd like to share with you. Because she was a remarkable woman with remarkable achievements, as all of the stories have indicated, but she had a lot of challenges in life, and she overcame many of them, but uh, she did do something that uh, really helped me in my work as a business performance coach. And I'd like to share that with you today as we have a, a brief but I think important story about the Barbara Walters legacy. That's the interesting idea for today, and it begins right now. Of course, uh, what uh, made Barbara Walters well-known is she truly was one of the first of the uh, women to break into the uh, media news communication business. It truly had been, <laughs> almost exclusively, you know, a man's world. And uh, here comes a, a few of these women trying to break in, and Barbara was one of them. And she had the opportunity on NBC for one of their very famous programs. Uh, it's still around. It's not nearly as good as it used to be, but it was called the Today Program, the, Day, the Today Show. And it had some very unusual characters. A guy named Dave Garraway, who is still a legend in broadcasting times. And uh, it was essentially, a, here's the morning news and features. And they also had, as one of their main characters, uh, what was called J. Fred Muggs. And um, he was a chimpanzee who uh, hanged around the set there uh, in New York City while they were doing the program. And Barbara was brought in to kind of be the today girl, you know, 
just that. You know, you have to have a little bit of a feminine touch to it, nothing terribly serious, uh, just, you know, some uh, maybe human interest or life stuff or some clever stuff. Um, she's an attractive woman, not beautiful, striking in the full sense of the word, but an attractive young woman, and she got that job. Well, <laughs> She obviously worked very, very hard. As some people might say, she had to be three times as good to get anywhere near the same reward as her male colleagues. But one of the things she did is she learned right away how to talk with people. And she became, of course, a world-class interviewer. Now, the reason I was struck with her, and I was not really a very fan of her. Others, obviously some things. I think probably her politics in some respect, but she never really went there that much. But uh, uh, in 1974, she wrote a book. And uh, by the way, if you want that book now, it may cost you hundreds of dollars. It is remarkable. The book was called how to talk with practically anybody about practically anything. How to talk with <laughs> how to talk with practically anybody about practically anything. Now you can still buy this book. It's long out of print. However, the reason I uh, kind of looked her up some time ago again is because I remembered reading that book and it was very helpful and so I, I didn't have that copy anymore. So I went back into Amazon in the used books and usually you know one of those long time books like that, you can buy them for a dollar plus shipping and handling. Not Barbara Walters book, it was really expensive. And just yesterday, I went again to look at it, and uh, here it is. I can get a hardcover copy of that book at Amazon for $299.99. If I want to settle for a paperback, it'll cost me $85.46. <laughs> it's just a small little book. And usually, as I said, books that are that old and that far out of print, they're practically a giveaway. Well, what was it that made this book important? Well, it was just about that. Barbara taught people how to be not necessarily interesting, but how to be interested in other people. And one of the great stories that she told, and uh, it really was an important story, and I found out <laughs> that in working with people, she had a real secret. And I would encourage you, <laughs> if you can get a copy of the book, or perhaps even get a handout of it, or some respect like that, I would really encourage you to read it. But the one point that caught me was that she was set up in a number of situations by the other men in the media establishment to uh, make it hard for her. And so they gave her difficult stuff to do or things that nobody else wanted to do. And she gamely went and did it. She tells the story that she was given the assignment to interview Aristotle Onassis. Now that may not be familiar to you, but let's go back to a little bit of history. Aristotle Onassis was a, a Greek shipping magnate, a, a self-made man who uh, was a incredibly successful, hard-nosed entrepreneur, but also a real curmudgeon. And what had happened, as many of you of my age and stage remember, is that after Jack Kennedy was assassinated, his wife Jackie, obviously a widow now, and it shocked everybody because she married this guy, Aristotle Onassis. And she became Jackie Kennedy Onassis. 
And people thought here was this beautiful, striking woman, Jackie Kennedy Onassis, and this little <laughs> curmudgeon guy who was kind of a, you know, kind of a character. Um, nothing very attractive about him at all, except he was very, very, very rich. And somehow an interview had been arranged with him, and uh, for some reason it was given to Barbara Walters to get that interview. And as she suspected, she thought, he doesn't want to do this. Somehow an agent or somebody arranged this, and somehow I've been given the job to do this. What do I do? What if he just tears me apart? What if he doesn't cooperate with me? What if he tells me to get lost? And here I will have blown my first big assignment. Well, here it goes. What she did, as she relates, is she was very attentive to him, very kind, introduced herself, and then she started, you know, the flattery trail. She said something like this, Mr. Onassis, you know, you are a fascinating character. You have a long history of doing so many things. And, you know, he owned an airline, he owned a shipping company, and she went through all of the things that he had achieved. And he just kind of sat there and listened to her. And then she said, uh, Mr. Onassis, I would be curious to know, what was your very first job? And she says, and he brightened up, lightened up, and started talking freely and it turned out to be a wonderful interview because he could tell his story. He was fascinated by the question. Nobody had ever asked him that before. Mr. Onassis, you've done a lot of remarkable things. What was your first job? And it went well. And she got the accolades. There was still a lot more to do. But she became the kind of person, and some people thought she was a little bit of a suck-up interviewer, a softball interviewer. But she always said, I'm not here in the business of making myself look good and making them look bad. I'm here to help them tell their story, to have an listener who's interested in them and um, in helping other people listen to them. Now think about that. <laughs> How to talk with practically anybody about practically anything. And the art of conversation. And oftentimes I say to people, we will not interview you. I do not interview anybody on my programs. I do not come with a series of questions or something I want to find out. What I want to do is, as I say, <clears throat> I'd like to hear your story and have a conversation. What would you like to talk about? Now, if I'm good, I'll be very, very present and listen. And I'll have a question or two, but for the most part, I'll say, tell me more. Or what happened then? <laughs> How did you do that? How to talk to practically anybody about practically anything. Well, I would encourage you to think about that this year. Oftentimes, a great career a great sales pitch, a great opportunity comes about because you know how to be very, very present, be very poised. As I say, <laughs> you are <laughs> fearless. You fear less. You are, uh, you know what? You are graceful. 
you are peaceful and you are useful. And somebody comes away from that conversation feeling that they were treated like the most important person in the world. Well, that's my Barbara Walters story. I wish I'd kept that book. I remember reading it a number of times, and uh, maybe someday I'll uh, be able to get another copy of it and see what I can do with it. But I would really encourage you to remember how Barbara Walters really got her start. Ask people, what was your first job? And then listen to their story. And then learn how. Uh, put together your own little guide how you could talk to practically anybody about practically anything. I'm Stan Houston. <laughs> These are interesting ideas. There we are, 15 minutes for the program today. And uh, usually interesting ideas comes to you every day of the week, work week, sometimes special programs on the weekend. But the method is this. Hey, if you take time uh, to read or listen to something new and useful every day for 15 to 20 minutes, uh, it will go well with you. So hopefully uh, this was a little bit of 15 or 20 minutes to help you uh, be more useful and more interesting and better at what you do. Mastery and mystery. Please reach out to me because I'd like to help you. There are a number of things that we can do for you. First of all, we're going to get you on the radio this year. We're going to help you be a better coach leader this year. We're also going to help you understand there, there are whole new ways to think and act like an entrepreneur this year. And uh, we're looking forward to building what is truly important, friendship relationships this year. Witradio.net, witradio.net will tell you the radio story for you this year. And uh, ask me a question, <laughs> suggest a subject, volunteer to be on my program. I would love to hear from you. Again, stanhousted at gmail.com, stanhousted at gmail. Com. And always close with a benediction. Yes, may this be a year that uh, goes well for you. May there be something that is quite special that will happen to you this year. And you will hopefully take time to count your blessings, say how thankful you are every day this year. Kind of my uh, words of wisdom for this new year came from G.K. Chesterton. He said, the object of a new year is not that we should have a new year. Uh, it is that we should have a new soul, a new nose, new feet, a new backbone, new ears, and new eyes. What do you think that means? Well, just let it sit on your head for a while. All the best. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.